Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Katie, for those who have for some reason forgotten, and this is Books for Us. So recently I just finished the Ink World trilogy. So if you don't know this, it starts with Ink Heart, and then Ink Spell, and Ink Death. And this is by Cornelia Funk. This was also a part of my DNA TBR. Yes, I am still working on it. Slowly but surely, there was a bunch of other things I wanted to read um, as well. Because um, I had started the D DNA TBR before June, and then I had Pride Month, and I wanted to read Pride books for that, and then stuff happened. So, um, anyways, I'm slowly but surely finishing that up. This is one of the last ones I had to read. Let me grab it real quick for you guys. So, I just finished Ink Death. There we are. I like, I kind of like the cover, um, I'm a big fan of purple, <laughs> that's kind of why, but, um, there's the, like, the skull here, kind of going with Ink Death, um, there's this castle here in a lake, which goes along with what goes on in the book, um, yeah, so if you don't know what this is about, um, I'm just going to be talking about this, actually, this whole video, that's what this video is about, is my thoughts on the Ink World trilogy. Um, so the first one, Ink Heart, um, again, spoilers, but they've been out for like a decade. So anyways, um, the first one, Ink Heart, deals with Maggie, who is 12, and her father, Mo, who she calls Mo. Uh, I don't know why. And he's a single father because something had happened ten years ago, nine, ten years ago, where um, her mother disappeared. And that's uh, that's all Maggie knows at the beginning of the book is that her mother is no longer there and she's never told why. Um, her dad is a bookbinder, so he makes new uh, covers for books. So in the case of, say, this one, um, this one's getting a little like tear here, so he might take the cover off and put a new cover on. That's what he does for a living. And because of that, he goes around, he lives in, this is based in Europe. Um, so he goes around Europe um, fixing books for people. That's basically what he does. And he takes Maggie with him, which means there's no stable uh, house for her. And she hasn't been in the same school a lot. Um, except this one time, which um, she's been in the same school for like two years. And this, in the middle of the night, and it's raining out, this guy comes to the front door, who she has no idea who it is, but her father recognizes. And they talk, and that puts into motion um, kind of the whole series. They, um, yeah, so that's kind of the start of the series. Um, the first one deals with um, how Mo doesn't want to read aloud to Maggie. He'll make up his own stories, but he won't read from a book. And uh, later she finds out why, because, again, spoilers, the man that came in the middle of the night is actually from a book he read. Like, he read aloud a character. So, say, Harry, if I was reading Harry Potter... I could read Harry Potter out of the book and he could be standing in my living room. That kind of thing. Um, so then that whole thing is kind of, um, there's a villain that had come through while with this other character. And it's all about defeating the villain in that first one, in that first book. Second one is a year later and her mother has returned, Maggie's mother has returned. And they're kind of dealing with what happened and the fact that uh, Risa, Ressa, um, Maggie's mother, can't talk anymore. And um, there comes a time where actually the villains' cohorts from the first book come back and they say, read us into, the, into a book or die. Um, the problem is Mo's never read anyone into a book on purpose. He's always read people out of books on accident, but not into books. Um, so somehow they end up back in the book. Uh, not only the characters, but also Mo, Ressa, 
and Maggie, they all end up there. So that's book two. Book three, um, well, book two has more things, but then book three, which I just finished a few days ago, uh, deals kind of with the aftermath of book two, obviously, and um, kind of, this is where it gets fuzzy for me. Like, I, I understand what happened, so like, there's another villain that covers books two and three that they're trying to defeat, um, and then that kind of is going on in book two and three. So, um, again, new villain, book two and three. So I guess I, what I wanted to do with this video is kind of talk about, you know, all of that, because I thought book one was really good, and that could have just been a standalone book, honestly. That could have been a standalone book for me. I, I didn't need books two or three. I mean, after having read them. Like, before reading them, I'm like, okay, cool, it's a trilogy, woohoo! Um, I, there's more of this world to explore. Um, but after having read all three, I'm like, I could have dealt with just book one. Um, because how it's told is that it's third person, um, but not, like, there's not one chapter dedicated to a single person. So, instead of having Maggie kind of see it from her perspective, all through chapter one, and then Mo chapter two, then recited chapter three, and then another chapter, chapter character, chapter four. It's like Mo, Maggie. You get to see the perspective from Mo, Maggie, and Risa all in one chapter, and that was kind of confusing for me, um, especially in book three, where there's like ten plus characters that you could be possibly seeing it from. So that really screwed me up. That's actually why I gave Ink Death a three star out of five, um, because I still I still liked it. It just it wasn't living up to what I was expecting. And um, if you go on Goodreads, actually, that's kind of what everyone else is kind of saying as well. Um, they were giving it a lower rating than the previous two. I don't know why. Um, I didn't go through any reviews of anyone else's. I just know what I said. Um, but Going along with, like, also the villains, like, there was one villain for Ink Heart, which is the first book, um, and that was fine, you know, defeat the villain, great, uh, but then there was one villain for books two and three, um, who was apparently worse than the one in book one, and it was just like, okay, but at the same time, if you if you want to keep with like tradition, why don't you at want like different villains in each one? Um, and get progressively worse because apparently, like the people in th this book, because they're read into a book, um, so the people in this book thought that Capricorn, which was the villain in book one, was just kind of like an upstart, but in book one, he seemed like the main villain. So, was this kind of like, were, were books two and three kind of like an afterthought to Cornelia Funk? I don't know, like, I have no idea how she planned the books, I haven't read anything into it. Um, but it just seems kind of, it was, it was good to know more about the world they were in, but at the same time, I kind of, um, it, they... <laughs> Some things seemed like an afterthought, I should say. Um, and so because of that, I kind of marked two and three lower than the first one. Um, but again, the lowest one I gave it was a three, which is still pretty good. I, I still liked the book. Um, there are just a few things that I had problems with. Um, but yeah, that is kind of all I have for you guys today, um, just because it's only... The, those three books. If you have any questions and kind of why I rated them high or low or where, wherever or medium, uh, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, um, I will put my uh, Goodreads in the description so you can always check out my Goodreads rating there as well. And with that, I will see you guys later. Bye everyone.